uh, Congressman Braley, you're not running. I, you're not running against these other people. You're running against me. I am a mother. I am a soldier, and I am an independent leader. You are being funded by Tom Steyer, who is a California billionaire extreme environmentalist. So remember, please, that you are running against me, not against any of these other groups. You're running against me. I realize that, and Senator. Uh, President Obama's name is not on the ballot. And I'm not going to owe President Obama anything on election day. You're going to owe the Koch brothers everything. Mm, heating up, and that's out in corn country in Iowa, where if you add a little oil, I guess you could have popcorn as this fight continues. Maybe to sit down and watch the next debate, get a big tub of popcorn and sit down if you're a political junkie. Republican State Senator Joni Ernst facing Democrat Congressman Bruce Braley in the race to succeed Tom Harkin in the U.S. Senate. They were really fighting in the first of three televised debates the other night. A Des Moines Register poll has Ernst in the lead in what is a very competitive race. To talk more about it, via telephone, Matt Towery of Insider Advantage and Skyping in from Washington, D.C., political strategist Joe Listingy. Gentlemen, you share Georgia roots, but we're <laughs> going to ask you to transport yourselves to the Midwest. Uh, from your perspective, Brother Latenji, who won that debate? Well, here's the, here's the, the kicker about debates. Um, they don't really matter. What matters is what we're doing now, sort of the post-debate spin. There aren't any undecided voters watching it. But I'll say this. They both had really good jabs at each other. Um, and in the end, I think they drew a draw on this one. They, they both sort of, while, while mentioning who was funding each other, both said, you need to run against me. But they both attacked the other person's funders. I mean, these, the biggest thing here was don't make a gaffe, and neither one of them made big gaffes, in my opinion. So I think it was a pretty, I, I think they drew a draw on that one. Well, let's see what Matt has to say. Matt, your take on debate one there in the Iowa Senate campaign. Well, first, I agree. Debates themselves usually don't decide anything. It's, it's how they are interpreted. Uh, I have generally found in Iowa, in particular, people pay attention to these debates, partially because their participation in the presidential uh, cycle and how important that is. Uh, but my view is right now that race is reflecting a lot of uh, close races we see all over the country. Uh, the Des Moines Register does have Ernst up by six. I expect that race to tighten, and uh, what should be a Democratic seat, quite frankly, uh, may go Republican, but I think it's going to go right down to the wire. Woo, so that's got to be welcome news, Joe Listingy, because a lot of people outside take a look at Joni Ernst. They go, well, here's an attractive candidate, a veteran, a mom, a farmer, and uh, Brother Braley is a member of Congress. I know from experience that's not always something that recommends you to right. the United States Senate. Yep, and even with that baggage, he's still pulling fairly close. And, and I agree, we're going to come down to the wire here. Um, and from the outside perspective, yes, they both look good. Uh, on paper for different reasons and they both have their own disadvantages. The problem is, is in the state right now there's a war being waged and the message for each candidate is both of, for both of them is very strong. So you have this which in the end it's which do you dislike more? Do you dislike someone who has these strong right wing roots or an incumbent congressman that's a Democrat? And they both are going to be it's going to be a war of attrition and the first one that messes up is going to be the one that loses. And that's what they're going to do, I think, for the rest of this campaign, is try not to screw up too much. Matt, drilling down on these numbers in the Des Moines Register poll, you check the cross tabs. Men are solidly in the corner of the conservative Joni mm -hmm. Ernst, and yep. women are supporting uh, Congressman Braley. Does that surprise you? No, not really. Uh, generally speaking, uh, when you have, uh, a, particularly if you have a very strong conservative female, they oftentimes will not attract what we call independent uh, female voters, in other words, those who could be Republican or Democrat, depending upon uh, how they are viewing the time and, and the issues at, at the point in time of the race. And that, that swing vote oftentimes does lean Democrat, particularly as a reaction to a strong female conservative. But at the same time, that strong female conservative will really galvanize those male voters who tend to be more conservative in most states anyway. So she's picking up what she needs to pick up. He's picking up what he needs to pick up. It's just someone's yeah. going to have to, to get in the middle there and get those last few undecided votes. All right. So, Joe, uh, mm -hmm. you think Braley can still pull this thing out? Will he oh, thank absolutely. women? I think, and I'm going to be honest. And, and, 
I, I'm often brought on to spend for Democrats, but I'm going to say this. I think really either one can win this race. The, the reason is, is there's, it's just such a diverse group of people. I want to go back to what we were just talking about. It's sort of a Sarah Palin effect. She has really galvanized these Republican men and these conservative men. And the question is, is that group going to be large enough to propel her over 50 percent? Neither one of them have polled over 50 percent. So I think it's a toss up still. But, yeah, I think Braley has just as good a chance as she does. Well, let's move a little further west beyond the borders of Iowa on out to Colorado. My old house colleague, Mark Udall, now the Colorado senator, uh, is in some trouble. A video from 2007 has resurfaced. Let's take a listen to what then Congressman Mark Udall had to say. There's some evidence that there were charges planted in the buildings. That is in reference, that is in reference to 9-11. Granted, it comes on a heavily edited piece of videotape by a group of anti-war activists and so-called 9-11 truthers, but to hear that rhetorical bow on the part of Mark Udall's campaign, Joe, is it enough to sink him in his re-election bid? No, I don't think so. This came out, I mean, obviously this occurred prior to his first election, so I, I mean, it should have come out then. This thing was heavily edited. If you look at it, it has splices of different videos in it there's sometimes there's te there's talking with no video for all we know he could have been repeating what someone asked him to make sure he understood it correctly i don't think this is going to have an effect in that race well what about the race matt uh, mark udall is in some trouble can uh, the republican challenger prevail well it's ironic that it was uh, when you look at the polls uh, on the real clear politics list it was about September 11th of this year when the polls started to turn against Udall. And I agree with Joe. I don't really think this is going to have that particular uh, soundbite we just heard is going to decide the race. But there are other things moving that race, including the fact that uh, you have a, a, a governor there who uh, pushed a, a guns bill. He's, he's now not doing well. And I think as we're seeing this in so many states all over the country, the Rep Republican and Democrat governors, having very, very hard times, more difficult, quite frankly, than some of the of the U.S. senators who are up in safe seats. For whatever reason, things have just started to drift apart and out away from the Democrats in this particular state. Colorado, as I said earlier, should be a Democratic pickup. It should be a Democratic state in which uh, Udall would, would prevail and hold on to his seat. But I see this one as, as one that could potentially drift over to the Republican side. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. We thank you for your time. Now it's time to update news with this Newsmax Now update. The director of the Secret Service will testify on Capitol Hill today. I'm Miranda Kahn. Julia Pearson faces questions from members of the House Oversight Committee. She's in the hot seat after Omar Gonzalez jumped the White House fence and made it deep into the White House. In Virginia, police say forensic evidence links two cases. Hannah Graham was last seen on the 13th. Jess Matthews faces charges in her disappearance, but that investigation found evidence tied to that murder of another Virginia woman. Police find the body of a missing Arkansas realtor, Beverly Carter, who you saw actually earlier. 33-year-old Aaron Lewis faces capital murder death charges in her death. And in Hong Kong, protesters clashed with police. The demonstrators want more freedom and say the Chinese government has until tomorrow to meet their demands. We'll have more news coming your way at the top of the hour.